Hey, what's up guys, my name is and we are back with Soho Luna Nights, and last time I muted my computer. Uh, last time I beat uh, Hong Mei Ling, or just Mei Ling actually. Well, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but I, I defeated the first boss basically, and uh, we're gonna be pressing on. Yes, okay. I'm gonna try to speed this up a little bit. Also, if you're wondering, I'm getting all of the, uh, any items that I may have missed, I would probably go back for them unless they're, like, not out of the way. So that's just something to be clear. If I do miss an item, whether intentional or not, I will go back for it, because this is a 100% run. Watch out, there's a Mandragora in the- oh, no. Okay, so this thing on the, on the ground here, that's a Mandragora. Apparently that's what it's called. Uh, when you get close to it, it will pop up, but you cannot attack it from here, as you can see. So, what we will have to do is approach it, and either stop time before it actually hits you, or kill in the air. Because that range is kind of brutal, and that and those guys have messed me up quite a bit. Uh, if you pause time here, you can see that this chandelier is gray. Keep that in mind for later, because I will be demonstrating something. Alright, fairies! We're bringing the fairies now, and we leveled up. Fairies aren't typically too bad, but some of them are quite annoying. We also have these giant swords. Can you really call them swords? Not really, but they, they're not too difficult to navigate through. More fairies of varying uh, variations. This one's quite fast, let's slow down, let's slow it down a bit. This one as well. Gonna take care of more fairies here. And there's some skeletons down here. They're not too threatening, but hey, you gotta hit them or they won't die. Because it's obvious. I mean, our save point here, we're going to the left. More skeletons. We have officially made it to technically the second area. And we got quite a doozy of an area here. This area is quite big, actually. It actually connects straight to the third area. So remember how I talked about earlier how auto-aim uh, aims at- Oh, there was a certain enemy that uh, auto-aim is uh, useful against? Well, those bright wisps- these moving wisps over here is exactly the enemy. If you don't use auto-aim, it'll be quite hard to hit them because they will try to avoid your knives. Unfortunately, I'm at a, a point where I have very little amount- uh, I was supposed to say mana, but it's MP. Uh, this channel is gray, so there's no problem there. Can wait for this cannonball to shoot? Then, well, try to destroy all the enemies here, except this sprite here. We're gonna go to the top left here, and we'll be seeing that there is a recovery vending machine here. Trash can is actually pretty hidden, and actually it's right there. As you can see, it's quite difficult to get into this one. Am yeah, I very difficult? I mean, very difficult. And there we go. We recycled. And you can see that in our card there. So yeah, there are fairies with cannonballs. Whoever let them have cannonballs should be fired. Uh, let me just say. Also, we have our first warp point, and that is very helpful because now we can warp straight to the first area without doing, well, much. So we're gonna kill these sprites. This is actually a pretty decent farming area, and by decent, I mean not very good. We're gonna wait for the cannonball to pass. Okay, gain some grays there so I can get some uh, HP and MP. I'm gonna kill these guys, because they're very annoying. Here we're introducing the Red Mist. If you come into contact with Red Mist, you'll become unable to control time. The ability will return as time passes. That is technically not true. If you get in contact with the Red Mist, first it lowers your TP, it depletes your TP, summon your TP, and once your TP hits zero, then it stops from not being in the time stop for like 10 seconds, I think, and it's a pretty long time, so we don't want to do that. And I don't like the fact that I took damage there. But yeah, 
if we do come in contact with it, you can see that, well, well, it also actually does stop you from stopping time, so you don't want to hit it. So we're holding this time stopping and getting through. You want to slide under this. Now this, there are a variety of ways to get through this. It doesn't look like it, but you can actually snail time through it. There's also this one. Uh, this one's quite annoying. You have to jump over this, this red mess and then slide under it. Nothing too bad, but still annoying. I'm actually dying really soon. I guess fairies aren't too bad. Uh, we actually want to go down here because... Okay, yeah, skeletons can throw their heads and it's very annoying. It's more annoying than you might think. I need to start stopping time because uh, I do want to gain some more uh, MP. So we have this area here, which, as you can tell, I'm not able to traverse. But we will be later. Very soon, actually. Not too soon, but fairly soon. Maybe like, I think third area. I don't think second area. Yeah, I do need to start. Uh... Okay, we actually have a recovery station here, so that's very nice. And the other than the first shot. As I said earlier, you can just you can just you can just dash on the ground, deal damage, and that's very satisfying. Going to the left here, so you know, this chandelier is gray, so nothing about it. Gonna kill these fairies first. I should not have dashed to the right. I should have dashed to the left. I know. I should not have gotten hit there. Yes. This chandelier is. Uh. Is, is, is the same color as it usually is, which means that it will fall down. Like that. So, you can time stop to help you figure that out. Or if you're like me and you forget everyone that exists, so you just get used to, used to the damage anyways. They are timed well enough that they will hit you, so just be careful. They threw a curveball there, two in a row. Not this one, though. We have a save point here. Thankfully not next to a fallen chandelier. This chandelier will drop, and we'll be getting... Double Jump Knight, and we can double jump. Well, just not in the water. And that will be immensely helpful, because... Double Jump is actually, like, one of the more important uh, upgrades. And I'll be explaining that a little bit. This after this section. Just let me... Okay. I didn't want to get hit there, but okay. So double jump, uh, as you can see, leaves two knives on the ground, and those knives actually can help you regain MP, MP. Since double jumping doesn't cost MP, you can essentially farm MP just like this. And it's very slow, but it's still a valid strategy. I use that a lot. But you probably won't see me using that a lot in this in this run, so don't count on it. We save him here. So now we now we have quite quite the uh, we have quite a number of places we can go to actually. Uh, then again, it is Metroidvania. I wouldn't expect anything less. Here's a curveball. Test two. Leveling up here. You don't need to be a high level for the next boss. The next boss is actually fairly easy if you know the tricks. Although, to be fair, I don't think any of these bosses are particularly difficult except the fourth one, and the fifth one, and the final secret boss. So you don't need to worry about that too much. We're gonna go heal first because I am in grave need of healing right now. Or should we go into the left here, because, uh, well, that is, that, that is a double jump area. And we do want to go get whatever's over here. Though, we will have to come back later. 
pretty sure. Actually, we can't. Uh, you can't actually make that with double jump. Uh, you actually need a different power up. You'll be getting in the third area. So we'll be saving that for later. Jumping up here. Defeat some more fairies. I need to start using Sun Knife because auto aim is just too expensive and not really worth it. I was I've been trying to use Stun Knife, but I haven't been able to. I forgot that guy was there. See, this is what happens when you forget things a lot. I'm gonna do this. Gonna snail time through this actually. Yeah, uh, dashing on the floor does not kill those, uh, I forgot what those called already. The Dragora things? I forgot what they're called already. Uh, gonna auto-aim here, and just hope, well, I, well I, I did get out of that alive, but I almost didn't. They almost got hit, but very close. Good to the save point. Now we have quite a bit of the mansion of this floor, I, I explained that earlier, but we can go up to the right there, but we want to check what's down here first because I actually forgot what's down here. Okay, this is actually the way to go to, the, to area 3, which we don't actually want to do yet. And also these bubble fairies are really annoying because their bubbles block knives, as you saw there. We're gonna go there, we're gonna go there later, but for now we're going to the top right. Actually there is one thing we gotta do in this room, besides going to the top right. I'm gonna wait for this platform. Gonna gonna kill these fairies first, actually. Cause uh, they are quite annoying. And actually, I think we can barely. Actually, we can't get this yet. It's uh right there. Uh, beyond the chandelier is actually a power up. A stopwatch, which increases your TP. But I don't think we'll be able to get that yet. We might be able to, but I highly doubt it. Yeah, not quite. We're gonna need the, the power up, the same power up that we'll be needing for the other section that I just talked about. Okay. I don't like this area because these Kuma Dragoros, I think. I think that's what they're called. They're very annoying and they're very, uh, there's a lot of them. So we're just gonna scale in this uh, section here. It's a vertical section. I don't, yeah, there's, n there's no area to, to the right here, so we don't have to worry about that. There is an item later, by the way, that will help us in finding hidden areas, so we will be using that. Alright, I'm just with a purple area, we can still move even when time has stopped. So, as you can see, if time stops, well, nothing happens to this platform, so we'll be traversing using this ability in mind, or this feature in mind. We're gonna kill all these fairies though, because they're very annoying. Uh, I did watch out though, because I am running a little bit low on HP. The thing is, I don't think there's a HP recovery station after this, so uh... That's unfortunate. Cause there's a there's a huge section over here. Um gonna auto aim. We're gonna get ready our auto aim. Time stop here. Don't mind me, just moving along. Perfect. We kill these skeletons and open up the secret area, which gives us another skill card. 
The Chainsaw, which is by far the fa my favorite uh, skill card at this point to use, is actually my second favorite skill card in the entire game. There is one that, that basically destroys or basically overpowers every single other one, and you'll see what that is. It is quite expensive, but it is well worth it. Using this chainsaw, we can one, we can basically use 15 uh, MP just to destroy these cannonball fairies. Is that strong? Yes. They have to be on screen though, so that is a problem. So do keep that in mind. If you're gonna use a chainsaw or something like knives. You gotta have the enemy on screen, or they won't take damage. Here is an HP recovery section. I think the, the boss is actually right up ahead. Score. Um, let me check. Yes, okay. The next boss actually has my favorite song in the game. I have mentioned this before, and I've mentioned her name. But if you haven't paid attention to any uh, of my videos at this point, then you might not know who she is. But if you're well-versed in the Toho fandom, or, not the fandom, the Toho universe, you might know who it is. I mean, now I know that she has partially some relation to this area, but oh well. Uh, we got, we're gonna use our, our, our shop ticket here, actually, uh, wherever it is. Here it is. We're gonna be selling most of our stuff, and we are going to be purchasing extra knives. Now again, knives are pretty limited in this game. You can't get 999 of them, unfortunately. We're also gonna be switching the chainsaw because that's the only one we actually gonna, we're actually gonna be needing. But also, don't be surprised if I die on this fight because there is one attack that destroys. I think it, I think it does 100% of your HP. It's that strong. So <laughs> let's hope we can do this. And let's see if my terrible voice acting will come back. Hey you, the maid. Freeze or I'll shoot. That voice. I don't know. Oh, wait. Marissa has like a high pitched voice. Anyways, here's Marissa. So. It looks like you're having fun. Let me. Okay, I can't do a high pitched voice, so. Let me join in. Before I let you join, can I ask why you're here? I came to borrow a book from the library, and I heard Amelia was busy playing, so I'm breaking in instead. Don't worry, Amelia gave me permission. Ugh, Lady Amelia. She has a big heart for letting a thief like you ever again. How rude to call me a thief. I just borrow things permanently. Taking something without permission is stealing. This sounds like something you, would, you wouldn't really say in like, I don't know, like a Toho game? This sounds like something you would say in like an educational game? Like Dora the Explorer or something. But good timing, I'll finish you off here. You're the one who's going down. It's gonna be game over. Love Colored Master Spark is my favorite theme in the game, and Marissa will shoot out to Red Mist. As we learned earlier, it will stop us from stopping time, uh, which we don't want to happen. We should want to chainsaw a few times. And uh, Red Mist, okay. Do you have to watch out for Marissa? Watch her carefully, because when she does that, that means that she's flying from the background and flying right into the foreground. Just enough that- okay, this attack. You're gonna just use snail time or stop time, whichever, to get around. At that point, she will stop using it, so... No fear. And I missed again. Great, I gotta stop doing that. Okay, uh... Not much to say about this fight. Get ready to jump. Oof, I should not have gotten hit there. I think I need an HP recovery now. If I had an HP recovery. I'm actually gonna throw some chainsaws here. Great jump.
Get ready for the Master Spark because once she uses it, you're gonna wanna pass by it on the opposite side that you were, so. It will one shot you, I'm pretty sure. Or at least, if not one shot, it'll do a lot of damage. So basically, a one shot. Can I jump up here? Use a chainsaw. We're getting MP just by grazing, is good enough, but. Okay, that one missed. Get that chainsaw hit, gonna jump up here. Gonna predict she's gonna go there, and she did. Snail time right now. The opportunity is here. You gotta wait for her to actually start using the spark, by the way, otherwise she will change directions without you knowing. And it is very annoying when that happens, because it looks like she's going one way when she's actually going the other. So, basically, don't, uh, stop time too late. Or it will end badly. Jump up, jump me up here. And we got it! Okay, Marissa first try. Uh, thankfully the HP Graze is pretty good in this game, so I'm glad I used that to my advantage. The, this wasn't supposed to happen. This, this I didn't, It doesn't say happen. This wasn't supposed to be like this. You shouldn't be able to use your powers. Really? I don't remember saying anything like that. I don't know why I'm giving her such a masculine voice now. Really? I don't remember saying anything like that. Damn it! Amelia chipped me. Okay, I never said damn in like a in like a high pitched voice, so that was an experience for me. To be fair, I've only said the word damn in my normal voice. I was too easy on you. You're pretty good for a maid. This does not fit Mirror Side at all because the Tell Spellable one, I know that one, and that one's pretty fitting. But I can't see that one, so <laughs> this is what you get. Precisely because I'm a maid. I take care of my master's enemies with all my might. I told you, I got permission. Whatever, you lost, so please be a good girl and go home. I, I went easy on you, yet you treat me so coldly. It wouldn't hurt you to bring me a cup of tea or coffee. Unfortunately, I can't prepare such things in this fake world. Hmm, <laughs> fine, I'll take a look around this world before leaving. Goodbye. See you, Marissa. Marissa is one of my favorite characters, and... Well... Love, Car Love Colored Master Spark is my favorite thing now. It beat even you and Owen was her in Bad Apple, so I gain a new respect for it. Because of this game, actually. <sighs> this witch does just as whatever she likes. But I wonder what she meant by being tricked. It kind of bugs me. They may be thinking, oh, the Area 3 boss is going to be uh, a long ways from here, right? Well, actually, no. Uh, as you saw there, the area... As you saw earlier, Area 3 was legitimately on the top bottom right section of the uh, the crossway. And that's actually pretty soon. She's not that far ahead. I, 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 the reason that she isn't as well is because most of the Toho characters are girls. I think all of them are actually girls. Hello there. How you been? I don't- I forgot her voice already. Natori, what's wrong? You know, just collecting some jewels. Okay, that just sounds like a... By the way, I brought some good for humans. Something good for humans. Take it with gratitude. What is it? It's a shop ticket. Ugh. Okay, I don't like that voice. I'm gonna change my change the voice. With this, you can summon we whenever you want. Even during a boss. Really? You can? Even during a boss fight. You can sell jewels or buy items. Okay, misinformation. I don't- I did not remember- I did not remember that fact, so here we are. If I do say so myself, it's a genius invention, don't you think? Uh, yes, you really are persistent. Don't look so annoyed, you must have collected a bunch of jewels by now, right? I think it'll be easier for you if you sell them to me and buy items. What I'm saying is, use me more. Okay, okay, I'll get it, I get it. I will use you again. See you, Sorry. With your Luigi cap. 
Luigi Kappa. Alright, so now we're going back because, uh, we call it backtracking. But yeah, we now have the yellow key, which means we can progress to that crossroads earlier and actually proceed because that that area actually uses the yellow key. But I think that wasn't the escape button, and I don't know why I thought that was the escape button. But I think that is a suitable time to stop. We are at 11, level 11, and we are 100 experience from leveling up. I think that's a fine place to start. We're actually a little bit higher than I thought we would. By the end of this game, we want to be at least level 45. Because the boss rush, we kind of want to be level 45 in order to, well, complete a Steam achievement. So, uh, yeah. With that said, this episode will be o is now over. Next time, we'll be heading over to Area 3 and hopefully going towards the next boss. Actually, this boss uh, took quite a lot less time than you think it would because, again, the first two episodes took up one area and the second one, this third episode took up this entire second area, so... Yeah, see you there, see you guys, and stay safe, don't mind the bark.